Hello everyone, my name is Jenna and my project was titled Screening for Cardiovascular Disease Risk Factors Among PCOS Diagnosed Females. So PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome is the most common endocrine disorder amongst females. It is highly complex, marked by irregular hormonal levels and it affects many systems within the body. However, we don't know exactly how and why it develops. It is diagnosed by meeting at least two of the three following criteria, including number one, irregular menstrual periods, Number two, hyperandrogenism, which means high levels of male hormones like testosterone. And number three, polycystic ovaries as seen on an ultrasound. This project was important to me because PCOS is associated with an increased risk of cardiometabolic disease risk factors. So I wanted to know if females are being screened for this risk, considering that all PCOS patients are recommended for screening under the current practice guidelines. This guided my research objective, which was to estimate the proportion of reproductive age females diagnosed with PCOS who are screened for cardiometabolic risk factors, and to determine if there is an association between cardiometabolic screening completed and PCOS phenotype. Phenotype here refers to uh, those labeled A, B, C, and D. A, B, and C all include hyperandrogenism, while D does not, and they're just a variation of those uh, diagnostic criteria which I presented earlier. So 935 medical charts were reviewed from a random sample of females aged 18 to 45 years who presented at an outpatient gynecology clinic in Calgary between January 1st, 2014 until December 31st, 2019. 46 patients were found to have PCOS and the recommendations for screening and phenotype were extracted. Descriptive statistics were used to compare cardiometabolic screening amongst PCOS uh, diagnosed patients and when we ANOVA and a one-way ANOVA was performed to compare cardiometabolic screening by PCOS phenotypes. So what did we find? Well, we found that only 50% of patients were recommended for screening. Now, which tests were they screened for? Well, 46% were screened for obesity, 50% were screened for type 2 diabetes, 33% were screened for hypertension or high blood pressure, and 41% were screened for dyslipidemia or an imbalance in lipid levels. So as you can see, the majority were not screened for obesity, hypertension, and dyslipidemia, and the most common uh, test screened for and disease screened for was type 2 diabetes. The one-way ANOVA also indicated that there was no association, that there was no association between cardiometabolic screening and PCOS phenotype, and this is summarized down below in uh, table one, and there was no statistically significant difference between cardiometabolic screening recommendations and PCOS phenotype groups. Now, what are our findings and what are the next steps? So these results indicate that there are gaps within uh, that there are gaps with respect to cardiometabolic screening. And unfortunately, interpreting trends at this time in screening is limited because of the study's small sample size. So the next step is to continue to develop this cohort so that further analysis can be conducted. Moreover, PCOS is not well understood and it's associated with a variety of comorbidities, which are diseases that are present alongside PCOS. So continuing to investigate the research objective will contribute to addressing the knowledge gap to inform future clinical practices and investigating current cardiometabolic screening practices will allow for relevant and improved clinical suggestions to be made to improve healthcare for women with PCOS. Now, the greatest takeaway from my research project was an indirect learning point, and this was how women's health issues like PCOS are highly understudied. Again, PCOS is one of the most common endocrine disorders amongst females, and yet we don't know very much about it. This is what drove me to study PCOS. Considering that in my cohort, only 50% of patients were recommended for screening, when all were supposed to be recommended for screening under the current guidelines, suggests that this may contribute to why we perhaps know little about PCOS and its effects on the body. Um, we also know that women's health related issues and complaints are not always listened to or taken seriously. So when I consider the intersection of being a woman and being a person with a disease, it prompts me to question how, these in how this intersection um, affects how women are perceived in healthcare and how they are treated. This to me was the most important takeaway from my research and emphasize that more research needs to be done and that women's healthcare needs to be made a priority. Thank you for your time.